breastfeeding your child is a personal choice, right? Well, we have a mother joining us now who says she was told she couldn't breastfeed her one-year-old baby and she fought back. I'd like you to welcome Rachel Rainbolt to the show. Welcome to Primetime, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Okay, so from what I understand, you were in a parent-teacher conference with your seven-year-old little boy and you have a one-year-old child. Mm -hmm. And during the conference, you started breastfeeding your child and the teacher got upset. Yes. So tell us the whole story. Uh, yeah, just like you said, it's a weekly required homeschool meeting with the teacher. Um, and of course, I have my one-year-old as well. He started to get um, kind of distracting and wanted to eat. So I started to breastfeed him and then instantly he was silent and calm. Mothers um, do that. They know yeah. if the kid's getting crazy and yes. wants to feed, you got to give the kid either a bottle or a breast. Yep. Right? And then instantly yeah. I could focus on what the teacher was saying again with my seven-year-old and everything was calm and quiet. Um, and then she turned to me and said that that was not appropriate and she didn't want me to be doing that there. Um, at which point I just educated her as to the law, which the California law states that a woman has a right to breastfeed her baby anywhere she and her baby are allowed to be present. Um, and she said, so you're not willing to comply? And I said, no. Okay, well, w wait a second. Why was she so upset about it? I don't understand. I don't know. She didn't tell you, like, why it bothered her? No, she just said it was not appropriate. What if people stare? We were the only ones in the room. <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you this. Did you cover the baby up with a receiving blanket? No, or I was not breastfeeding with a cover. So, you're, so it was just the breast was hanging out, so she could see your whole breast? Well... I mean, there are a lot of ways to breastfeed so that you're not totally hanging out. I mean, you like I wear two different shirts, so one goes up and then one goes down, so all the skin is covered. Most of the time when I'm breastfeeding, he's in the pouch or the carrier, yeah. um, and then you really can't see it. Well, yeah, I, ma I breastfeed four babies, and you can master that so nobody <laughs> yes, knows what you're doing. This is my third, so I know what I'm doing by now. So there was no skin exposed of your breast? No more so than would be exposed like in a regular shirt. And that upset her? It upset her. Well, did she tell you that you were not allowed to bring the children during the parent-teacher conference? No, and since it's a homeschool program, most of the homeschool families have more than one child. And okay, time out. This isn't even a public school. You homeschool your kids. Through the public school district. Yes. So they have a homeschool program where once a week we meet with the teacher and have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And then once a month, the children attend a group presentation class with their families, where all the families and the children watch as each kid takes a turn giving a presentation. Well, it sounds like a cool program. It's a really cool program, and we were very happy with it up until that point. <laughs> and so, and this woman is used to meeting with families and other mothers. Yeah. I just... It was I, shocking. Yes. It's yeah. kind of bizarre. And so there's no... You know, there... I'm. In my mothering experience, mm -hmm. the teachers would say, sometimes it's appropriate to bring your kids to the conference, mm -hmm. and sometimes they say, you need to find a sitter, you know, children are not allowed, we want to have right. private conversations with the mothers or the and fathers. And when we were going through the traditional yeah. school, we did get a lot of that, you know, where they would say ahead of time, please try to find a sitter for your child. But for the homeschool program, um, since they know that you know we're doing this because the parent who's homeschooling is the primary caregiver for all the kids and since the meetings are so um, consistent you meet every week and then that other one once a month um, they really don't say that I don't think really the, most families would be able to swing that um, since it is a homeschool program um, go backwards a little bit why mm -hmm. did you decide to homeschool your seven-year-old uh, a lot of different reasons. Um, I just really loved the freedom to be able to sort of have a child-led education where he could sort of, we could follow whatever would spur his excitement and his passion for learning. Um, and I felt like I had the background and the time and energy to be able to give that to him. You have a master's degree, correct? <laughs> yes. Yep. And then using the districts, going through the district to homeschool, gave us that extra structure too, where we could make sure that we were doing the same amount of work that they were doing in the school. Um, but doing it homeschool, you can do it a fraction of the time. So then you can spend the rest of your time at museums and, you know, zoos and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you sound like a very good mother. Oh, well, thank you. Seriously. I <laughs> no, I, and, okay, so the woman was not happy. No. And so then what happened after that? She asked you to stop. Did she stop the meeting? I, as soon as she said, so are you willing to comply? And I said, no. Then she turned and went. She was in the middle of a sentence with my son when she turned and started the conversation with me. And then she sort of turned back and continued with what she was doing with my son. 
Um, and I get that you'll, you know, run into people who are ignorant to the law or things like that in your life, you know, individuals. Mm -hmm. So I don't so much mind having to educate an individual person. But the real shocking part um, and the reason for all of this right now is that I went, you know, above her to the district and they supported her personal views in opposition to the law. Okay, but she did finish the meeting. She didn't yes. stop the meeting. No, okay. she finished She did meeting. finish it. Which I'm surprised you didn't just get up and walk away, but that's, I would have been upset. <laughs> well, it was about my seven-year-old, and I was yeah. trying to stay very calm because I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable or, See? you know, penalized. Another so. good mother judgment. I love <laughs> it. I, I, everything you're saying makes me believe you're a great mother. Oh, thank okay, you. so then you complained. You you obviously thought about it more and more, and you complained mm -hmm. to the district, and they decided that she deserves to have her own rights and what. Tell, tell us more, what happened? Well, I sent in a letter stating that, you know, I assume that she just wasn't familiar with the law. Here's what the law is. Um, can you please inform her that I'm sure the district's policy is to, you know, allow breastfeeding mothers to breastfeed on school campuses um, in accordance with that law. And they came, well, they didn't respond to me, so I elicited the support of the San Diego Nursing and Public Task Force. And they sent in a letter, and the district finally responded to them, saying we balance following the law with ensuring the safety of all of our students and we're going to leave it up to each individual teacher to decide if they want to follow that law. Wait, time out. Safety. When has exactly. breastfeeding been a dangerous exactly. thing? Exactly. When Would I you saw just that spill word? a lot of milk and you, someone slipped on the <laughs> I ground? I don't think ever, anyone's ever been taken out from being a bystander to a uh, mother breastfeeding her baby. Yeah, they use the, the word safe, that they have to keep the kids safe. That's bizarre. Very, very bizarre. So then the district called me and informed me that my son would no longer be allowed to participate in the group presentation class. Why? Because of what had happened. Exactly. I really, I don't know why they would because, penalize him. Because of what had happened, because you complained or because you breastfed in front of the teacher? They said that if you cannot guarantee us that you will not ever be breastfeeding your baby in that class, then he cannot attend that group presentation class and he will have to give his presentations in private. And I couldn't, of course, guarantee that I would never have to breastfeed my baby. I didn't intend on bringing the baby to every one of those classes, but I can't I guarantee that it would never happen, you know, being a mom of three and not having a nanny or anything like that. You yeah. know, there are times where he might have to be there. Well, yeah, you're a mother of three and you're homeschooling your children. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Now, what happened? You got this letter. What did you do? Uh, well, then at that point, I filed a complaint with the Department of Okay, okay, right. we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to we're going to find out this interesting <laughs> story. What your plans are to do next? We're back with Rachel Rainbow, who says she was discriminated against for breastfeeding her baby. All right, Rachel, we talked about the district telling you that you were not allowed to come to their meetings if you could not guarantee that you would never, ever breastfeed your baby. <laughs> Which right. you're, you're a mother of three, and you homeschool your children, yeah. and you say, well, I'll try not to, but I can't guarantee that. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, how did you feel when they told you that? Awful and shocked. I mean, the law is so simple and so clear, and, you know, like I said, I can sort of handle one person not understanding the issue, but for it to go up through the powers that be at the district, which is an institution that's charged with the well-being of children, you would think this yeah. would fall in line with that. For them to come back and say that was very shocking. And to reiterate, uh, folks, Rachel was covered. Her breast was not exposed. She's a professional breast <laughs> <laughs> mother who's breastfed many, you know, three children. So. It's really bizarre. Well, and it's up to each baby and mom to decide for themselves like how they're comfortable breastfeeding and what you know what arrangement is comfortable to them. Just like you know when you wear a shirt, like some people are more comfortable with it being more low cut than others. So even I mean that issue it really even is completely moot because some mothers might expose more than others, but that doesn't mean that they have less of a right to breastfeed than the mom who covers. So tell us the law that gives you the right. The to law breastfeed. says that a woman has a right to breastfeed anywhere she and her baby are allowed to be present, and that's it. So there's no condition on you have to wear a hooter hider, or there's no condition that there can't be other people around. It's really simple and clear. And they allowed babies to be in those meetings. Yes, the discrimination comes into play because they allowed other families in that meeting who were not breastfeeding. They would have allowed a mother who was bottle feeding. So to specifically include my family because of our breastfeeding status is discrimination. All right, so what did you do to fight back? 
Well, so then I filed a complaint of sex discrimination with the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, and they are the body that's charged with handling cases of breastfeeding discrimination. Um, so we have been quietly working through that process since April when this happened, um, and then I was just informed that they are going to side with the district. They are going? Why? Yes, they are, what are closing out my case. They don't really give a reason. They said that unless I can produce more evidence that all of the remaining group presentation classes were canceled because of me, then they're going to close out the case. So once I filed that legal complaint, I got a phone call saying that all of the remaining group presentations were canceled for the whole program. So because they did that... It's kind of fishy. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Are you planning to sue? I have no plans of suing the district. I don't get any money from this. I wish you could get paid for doing the right thing, but you can't. <laughs> um, so I, all of what that we've been asking is that they create a policy and publicly state it that says that they're going to follow the law, and they are just absolutely sticking to their guns. So right now we are really exploring all of our options. Um, we've been sort of in contact with the ACLU trying to figure out where we want to go from here. Oh my goodness. Are you still breastfeeding? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, after that initial incident happened, I felt so ashamed and, you know, you feel just awful and then guilty about guilty my about older what? son. Well, about my older son having to be put in that position because he's now being penalized for something that he had nothing to do with. Um, but, you know, I look at my baby and I just, I just have to stick with oh it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so archaic. Women have been breastfeeding babies for what? I know. Millennia. Hundreds, yes, yeah. of years. I mean, and then yeah. some. So it was like, what is this? This yeah. is the 21st century. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it's mind blowing. Look how far we've come, yet women still can't breastfeed in public when they want. It's pretty yeah. crazy. And it's a woman's issue, and then it's also a, ch a children's issue. Like, the baby has a right to eat. Right, and it's proven it's the healthiest yeah. form of feeding your child. Yep. Proven. The honest child. Yes, not disputed. <laughs> no. Let me ask you. Uh, you stated once that you were bullied when you were a child. Do you feel bullied here? Absolutely. Absolutely. When it first happened and then as it went up through the district and I still just kept getting, you know, those messages back that that they were not going to, you know, support my legal right to do so and that I needed to just drop it and quit breastfeeding on campus and go away. Absolutely, it like brings up all those feelings, you know, when you're a kid and people try to take away all of your power. Um, but I think just from my journey of becoming a mom, I really learned that in order to advocate for my kids and help ensure their well-being, I have to be willing to stick up for myself and then in turn for them. Have you reached out to the woman who asked you not to breastfeed? I have not. Um, I have consistently said that I have no ill will toward her. I, I genuinely wish her the best. Um, you know, hopefully she's you know aware of the law now and will think twice about <laughs> uh, doing that in the future with other moms. But I really, I, I don't have. I thought she was a good teacher. You know, up until this incident happened, um, I think she does a great job with the homeschool program there. So I, I wish her the best. I just hope in the future she'll. Be more supportive of moms who are breastfeeding. In are, you, are you still homeschooling? We left the Powell Unified School District and are now homeschooling through a charter school. Sad. It is sad. I love the Powell Unified School District. I graduated from Poway High. I would have loved for my kids to have continued on through there. But like you said, I just feel so bullied and I don't know what to do. My baby, I can't, again, I still can't guarantee that he won't have to eat. You know what? I'll tell you. This is what you do. You know, make a lot of noise. <laughs> Squeaky wheel gets the oil. Well, that's why we scheduled yeah. the nurse in, and, and all of the moms came to try to make it so that Tell we could be ignored. Tell us about that. Uh, well, we scheduled a nurse in at the in front of the Poway Unified School District um, offices, so we wouldn't disrupt an actual school uh, going on. Um, and so we had 120 moms RSVP to say they were going to come. A lot of news, you know, media outlets came, um, so that we could really bring some attention to this issue. I'm not the only mom that has ever gone through this. I think a lot of moms just, you know, sort of experience these discrimination cases and then walk away and feel disempowered and ashamed. Absolutely, and quit you feel like this is bigger than them, right? Yeah, yeah. I just really want to speak to the district, asking them to make that policy, but also to all the moms out there just so that they know, like, it's not okay if this happens to you and it's not right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you Under so Prime much. Diamond. Here on, here on this show, you have a voice. Yeah, thank you. You have thank a voice. Thank you so much. All right. Well, good luck to you.